Hello, Mary Meet. So I want to review an Oracle deck. The deck I want to review is the Barbiri Zodiac Oracle. I think that's how the name is to be pronounced. Barbiri. Something like that. It's published by Los Caribbean. So, let's begin with the box. It is durable. Like a lot of Oracle deck boxes, this will last you for some time and will keep your cards safe. One thing I do not like is that the cards here, there's not a lot of cards. It's a very slim deck, so that they have even made a bigger box than I need, so that, as you hear here, because there's not a lot of cards in here. Let's have a look at them, shall we? Let me see who made them first. It was Barbara Moore, an artwork by Paolo uh, Barbieri. What I do like is that they have this little ribbon. I'm a sucker for those that you just lift the contents up with that. It's classy. Let's start with the book. Because, like I said, when it comes to uh, Oracle decks, the book is so much more important than when it comes to a tarot deck. Because this is what you get. Now, since these are based on um, in the Zodiac, technically speaking, you can probably figure out meanings of cards just by reading about the various uh, symbols and signs and ideas of the Zodiac. But for most Oracle decks, you are sort of limited to the book because it's its own little self-contained system. Well, with a tarot deck, you can Tarot or um, Lenormand, you can always f find a book or other information. Or of course you can just read um, intuitively, but if you want to get the meaning of the cards. Yes, let's have a look here, here shall we? This is a book that is not a lot of information in, because here we have five different languages. Your typical English, Italian, Spanish, French, and I think it's Chinese. So, um, basically the English section goes from page 7 to page 41. So, yeah, not a lot of information there. At times, Los Caribbean likes to um, swim a bit. So, basically, we have preference and uh, it basically tells a little bit about the history of the decks you have the cards the signs of them uh, some little bit of information on astrology and then we get to the cards each card gets a little blurb like this that's all it gets this little blurb that's all it is yeah there's a little bit of a blurb more but basically yeah, here you have c1 card there's not a lot Um, and there are twenty something cards, I think, in this set. Twenty six cards, and then we have some layouts. We have a standard three card layout. Uh, we have a standard three card layout with an additional card added for more clarification. Some techniques of how to lay it. We have a um, uh, zodiac spread, which is unique to this one, and that I like. I always like to get unique spreads and a bit about the artist. This skimps a lot. The book looks very nice, though, as you can see here. Uh, but yeah, not impressed by that one. Then we get to the cards themselves, and they are beautiful. So, as you can see here, we have uh, signs and gods of the zodiac, and they are awesome. They are absolutely beautiful. Want some lobster? I'll have some lobster. 
I'll have a lot of lobster. Especially if they look like that. Yeah, this one doesn't really fit very well, nor does it. I mean, it, your skimpy outfit is completely okay, but the come hither look, it's like, uh, I'm a virgin. Yeah, sure you are. And I mean, it's not that it. The Virgo has to be an actual virgin, but what it's. The ideas that it stands for, not so much represents in that card. But for the most part, these cards are spot on and awesome. And actually, what I would normally use this deck for is, for example, meditating on an astrological sign. Or for a ritual based on an astrological sign. And then. Um, uh, the art style, I would say, are a bit like uh, computer game fantasy types. It, you can imagine these on Magic the Gathering cards, but they are more like your typical, I'm thinking, Dark Souls is what. I really um, is what I really um, my mind are drawn to. As you can see, it's the planets, it's the signs, and yes. So it's a very astrolo uh, astrology team deck. And yeah, this is a good deck. You could definitely do divination with this one. But like I said, for me, it will, since I usually prefer decks that have more cards in them, to get more variation when you do um, to the randomness of them. For me, these will more be something I would use for meditation, for ritual work and such, but definitely definitely for divination as well. Now these are for I really like because they're element cards and I think these can for example be used to mark out a circle or for mm, meditation when you're uh, trying to learn more about the elements. So yeah, the artwork is just Awesome. Like Miss Earth fairy hair, I'll have some of her too. Together with Mr. Lobster. I'll have a threesome. Um so yeah, I mean I think that with 26 cards it's a little bit of a tin deck to me. If you are looking for a deck where you don't have to memorize a lot of cards, this might be it. Uh, I will more use it for ritual work than for divination, but you can definitely do that as well. The cardstock quality is quite okay. I have no complaints. It will last you for a while. Uh, the cards are relatively glossy, but not over the top glossy. And the shuffle feel is... Okay. Uh, with these cards, they, they are so big that it can be a little bit difficult to get your hands around them. But all in all, compared to a lot of Oracle decks, I do tend to catch a little bit on the sides, as you can see. But for the most part, this is pretty okay. This is how the backside looks. It is reversible, which I like, because I do work with reversals on Oracle cards at two at times. I think that the deck itself is pretty good. Where did I put the box? Um, and as a ritual tool, I really like it. As divination, it's definitely usable. The little uh, white book though, nah. Not good enough. But the deck itself is the important part, and that is excellent. So would I recommend this deck? Well, Yes and no. 
if what you are looking for is a divination deck based upon the zodiac, based upon astrology, yes, absolutely, it's a good deck for that. If you're looking for a ritual tool to use as for planetary and, um, powers, basically, for example, putting in one of those cards on your altar to draw in that planetary power, for example, or for meditating on those, absolutely, I recommend that deck. If you, I'm recommending a deck for a general oracle deck, then no, because there's just not a, enough cards. However, uh, if you like to work with small decks, definitely this could be the deck for you. It's a pretty good deck, it is decent, and my only two complaints are the little uh, book is not, it's just not good enough, and there isn't uh, enough cards. Uh, but I'm not really sure how many of the cards you could have added. Um, I'm sure they could have done something to make it a little bit, filling it out a little bit. Like I said, but those are my only two complaints. All in all, I'm very pleased with the deck. It's a beautiful deck. It gets the symbolism right, other than with Virgo. Uh, so, yeah. I'll go have a um, dream of Virgo, Lobsterman, and um, Mrs. Earth Fairy. And, um, yeah. This is my review of the Barbiri Zodiac Oracle by Barbara Moore and Paolo uh, Barbiri, whose names I'm probably butchering. And it's a pretty good deck. I really like it. So, yeah, have a great day and blessed be.